Learning Redis, Section 4. A game needs players. Modeling a player. Okay folks, it's time to get our game started. And what's the first thing that every game needs? That's right, I've already given you the answer. Players. But see how easy this is going to be? Now in this section we're going to be looking at creating a persistent model for a player, storing and retrieving the player data in Redis, and we'll spend some quality time on security namely the storing and validating those player passwords. Video 4.1, Modeling a Player. So now in this video, we're going to talk about what a player represents in our system, and then we'll talk about how we're going to model the persistent player data using Redis structures. Now the best place to start with modeling is determining just how much you actually need to model. We want to figure out the minimum necessary functionality of a player in our system. So let's walk through exactly what our game expects of a player. Now, we need to identify who's playing the game, right? So a player in our system needs to be able to register and log in. A player must also be able to start a new game or join a game that a player has created. And finally, a player needs to be able to submit a turn when appropriate which also implies that we need to communicate with the user and tell them when it's time to take their turn. So now let's look at how a player relates to our application. Now clearly a player needs an ID and a password to be able to register and log in. A player also seems to need a set of games, but is that right? Or does a game need a set of players? Maybe both? Well, we'll need to consider that, but we're going to leave that for later. So now remember, with no indexes and queries, reachability is paramount. In this case, it makes sense that we should be able to reach these objects in the system by using some sort of an ID. In fact, let's just agree right now that a player's ID will be their email. If we identify players by their email addresses, we'll be able to avoid any additional lookup methods in the system. The user will be able to register with their email and they'll log in with their email. A player will even be able to find their friends by email. So we probably won't need another method for finding friends. Likewise, by using an email ID, a player would be able to readily find their friends' games. So, we've defined our access key as player, the type, player plus the player's email address. So what are we storing in that key value? So in the case of the player, this is pretty straightforward. We just need to store a few strings to match our requirements. It's basically the player's email and their password. And let's go ahead and add a name field just so we can be a little more friendly. So all we're modeling here is actually a simple set of key value pairs. But fortunately, there's a Redis structure just for that kind of thing called a hash. So we're going to use that. Now you might be wondering why don't we just store the games in the player hash too? Well for one thing, reachability. We'll need to access any given game in several ways and only one of which is through a certain player. Now the most obvious one of which is that we have multiple players in any given game. So if we have an object accessible in multiple contexts, it must have its own identity separate from the player. Okay, so why not store the game ID on the player? Well, the player could be playing multiple games at the same time. So really, we need to have a set of games for each player. Now Redis has a set that we can use to store the game IDs, but we can't store it as a value in the player hash because that needs to be a string. So we'll just create a key that identifies a Redis set of games for a player and we'll store the ID there. We'll see that later. So now we've defined our access keys and our model. So next up, let's write some code. We'll be creating, storing, and retrieving these players in no time at all. 